amazing. They look like you should be able to find them in a lot of the bigger, more expensive department stores. I love this shrug. This shrug is by far my favorite accessory with this clothing line. This shrug allows me to wear it short and sexy or long and a little bit more flirty and flowy. So the transformation just happens just very uniquely by flipping the garment upside down. So if I remove my arms, flip the garment upside down, losing that scarf and collared effect, but again, taking that scarf and transforming it to the lower half, making it long and sleek, super simple. The Beanery Depot and Deli, coffee, made to order subs, snacks, and more. Meatball sandwiches, fresh and hot, pepperoni rolls, fish sandwiches, chicken, milkshakes, the Beanery Deli. When you're hungry for something special and it won't cost you a lot of beans. Join and save at Sam's Club, your local club, Boardman, 6361 South Avenue, Boardman, Ohio. It's Sam's Club. Join and save. Hi friends, I'm Gary West. And whether you find Augustine's Pizza at your local grocery store or at their restaurant in Newcastle, the folks at Augustine's Pizza hope that their pizza is always your first choice for any and all occasions. What's inside? Come on in and take a look at the menu. There's many barbecued delights ribs, chicken, and much more. Salads of every kind. Sides that'll tempt your appetite. And we have eat in or take out at Big J's Hurricane Grill. Maureen and Big J say everybody is welcome. Bill's Bake Shop will make you happy. Bill Cast is the owner, and he and his staff keep the tradition going with all those bakery items that you remember as a kid. Just to name a few items, Bill makes cream sticks, cinnamon rolls, bear claws, cream horns, cannoli, cakes, pies, cookies, bread, pizza, and so much more. Bill's Bake Shop, located at 228 North Liberty Street in the Mahoning Town section of Newcastle, is open Tuesday through Saturday, 7 to 5, and Sunday, 7 to 2, closed on Monday. Bill's where smiles are everywhere. Call 724-654-4223. It's winter, so come on inside, sit down, grab a cup of hot cocoa, and watch NCTV 45. The Crane Room for your lunch and dinner rendezvous. You'll enjoy their pleasant atmosphere. The Crane Room takes pride in their wide variety menu. Appetizers, sandwiches, soups, salads, entrees, pasta, and the best burgers in town. Newcastle's best selection of domestic, import, and craft beers from around the world. And the Crane Room features a 35-tap draft system. Ask about their daily specials that will please you every time. The Crane Room is located at 3009 Wilmington Road in Neshanic Township. Call 724-656-1553. It could be you, it could be me, it could be everything we see. Given the day, given the time, given the moment. It could be you. Globe Leader, your hometown newspaper since 1880. Go to nwglobe.com to read fascinating articles. If you know someone who would enjoy this amazing publication as much as you do, why not give them a gift subscription? I am excited about getting this into the homes of as many people as possible. Please send their email address and we'll do the rest. Call 
646-846-8098. That's the Globe Leader, your hometown newspaper since 1880. All in a nutshell, 102 and 117 North Mercer Street in Newcastle. Visit Keith and Margot Jackson for that new look. In the latest in women's and men's clothing. Treat yourself today. You'll be glad you did. Joshua Sun Rehabilitation Center. From the moment you arrive, you know that you're in the right place. Dr. John Wrightson listens first. He pays attention to detail and then makes the determination. Joshua Sun Rehabilitation. We make the pain go away. Tuscany Square Restaurant, 3470 Wilmington Road, where old world charm meets the modern conveniences of today. Spacious seating and amenities await. Fresh ingredients that make that just right pizza or entree. It's Tuscany Square for your next event. Stop and see us or give us a call at 724-654-0365. The Land of Oz, located next to Subway on Washington Street, features unique clothing for that special design one of a kind. Also accessories of every sort. Team logo and school logo. Also jeans, tops. For that special look it's the Land of Oz located in downtown Newcastle next to Subway. Hello this is Matthew Geiger with NCTV 45 Focus NC. I'll be moderating uh, I'll be having a conversation with uh, County Commissioner Steve Craig. Uh, we're continuing the discussion on revitalizing Newcastle downtown that we have been uh, we've been having sent for the last couple of sessions. Um, uh, welcome, Steve. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you want to give us a little background about yourself? Sure. I've been a County Commissioner now for uh, I'm in my twelfth year. Okay. Uh, I'm a local guy. Love Lawrence County. Love Newcastle. Uh, graduated in the Shannock High School, uh, went away to college to uh, John Carroll University in Cleveland uh, for my undergraduate degree, master's degree from George Washington University in D.C. Uh, worked all over the country but came back to Newcastle to uh, you know, have a family and begin a career and uh, I think it's a great place to live and work and, and, uh, and raise a family so I'm, uh, of course I'm, I'm home and this is going to be home forever. So. Okay. Uh, well, in our in our previous show, uh, Barbara Grossman and I had a little discussion on about attitudes and division sure. of community, and maybe there wasn't a feeling, a sensation that everyone was part of the same community. And you mentioned you were from the Shannon, correct? Well, I, I live in the Shannon now, but of course I work here in town. Okay. A lot of my activities are here in town. Okay. Um, I just think Newcastle and the downtown yeah. is the center of uh, of the community. Uh, and we have some great smaller communities also. I mean, you know, there's, there's downtowns in Wampum yeah. and, and Elwood City and, uh, and Volant. But really, uh, this being the county seat, yeah. this has a little bit more activity and a little bit more focus than some of the other okay. places. And one of the things we were concerned about was that uh, people would point to downtown Newcastle. I don't want to go there. Those, the wrong kind of people are down there, the kind that are going to mug us or something. And, and mm. you know, and I don't know if you've encountered that, but um, do you, you know you clearly work down here or not? And so it it seems to run counter to some of those. I, yeah, I think those are, are, are notions that are outdated. Um, I mean, I work at the courthouse, but I walked down here today okay. from the courthouse to downtown. Yeah, uh, it's a good walkable community. The sidewalks yeah. are in good repair. Uh, you come across on the Shannon Creek. It's a beautiful yeah. view up and down the, the, the waterway. I mean, I always stop at, the, at yeah. the bridge and look over. I mean, there's a little bit of ice on the water today. <laughs> I don't want to give it away. But uh, uh, I think there's a lot of beauty. And uh, I like the old architecture in yeah. town. Uh, Refresh Dental across the street here oh, yeah. has done a wonderful job in, in preserving uh, that area, the Neisner building. And uh, I just think there's, there's a lot to offer. Treloar and Heisel next door okay. to them 
has done a wonderful job uh, rehabbing and reusing their building and is expanding into okay. other buildings downtown. There's still a lot of work to do. Yeah. But there's also a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurs and people okay. that, that want to get established here in our downtown. Yeah. Um, and the one thing I noticed is in speaking this attitude, so we're, we're trying to kind of dispel it because I, I've encountered it and I said, just come on down to the show that was right. on Friday down and uh, two brothers and this person came down and well, it wasn't so dangerous. And, right. and you know, you have lawyers going out in the middle of the night you know, coming from work, I mean, it, it can't be that dangerous, right? Right. There's lots of office workers downtown yeah. now. We, you know, the banks and, and those businesses we just mentioned. You've got two coffee shops really anchoring the yeah. same block, and they have evening concerts and, and meetings and yeah. get-togethers. Uh, it's just a good place for, for young folks and folks of any age to yeah. get together now. There's a lot of activities in yeah. town. It's good places to eat. Yeah, uh, you know, Lanigans and just across the uh, the creek up there at Four Brothers. Yeah. I mean, there's really good. We, food we just had Little Johnny's actually, and it was very. Oh, good. Little Johnny's yeah. is great. They have wonderful pizza. Yeah, they have. There's, you know, there's some great and the, right. the, two, the two brothers. I had some their scones right. and their. And if that's not your style, I mean, Coney <laughs> Island has been serving yeah. the the, uh, the same quality hot dogs and food yeah. for forever. It seems. I mean, that was there when I was a kid, and still there. There's some yeah. of the best hot dogs you're going to find anywhere on the planet, it's, not just in Newcastle. <laughs> they're iconic. I believe they're known all over the nation. I think they actually. are, too. I mean, I, I can still remember coming back from college, and the first thing I wanted was a couple of Coney <laughs> dogs, or maybe more than a couple. So, <laughs> right. That's good. Um, and they're, of course, still here, so that's that's yep. points to a yep. lot of positive. And so, you know, I, I've noticed um, a really in this around Mill Street, around Royce right. Washington, which is probably – as far as I can tell, some of the most beautiful streets, they've really been beautified. Right. And um, one thing I've noticed is that there's a lot of professionals moving in. Uh, you know, dentists, doc, uh, medical doctors, right. optometrists. Um, and you have uh, just lawyers. You have you know, maybe some accountants. I'd like to see some IT people coming in because, I you think, know, those. I think you're going to see that. I mean, yeah. you've got InfoCision right here in town. There's okay. always a couple hundred could you, people. Could you, do you know what InfoCision is exactly? It, InfoCision is, is uh, in the building that used to house the Troutman's department store. They okay. occupy the top two floors. I can okay. see them from here. Yes. They're right out there. Uh, they uh, they are a call center, and, okay. and that's kind of a misnomer sometimes. Yeah. I think they take probably as many inbound calls as they make outbound calls. So okay. they're, they're a customer service relations kind of organization. Okay. They pay great wages, have good benefits. Okay. They're a good downtown organization. And, of course, right across the river there is our transportation center. Yeah. Uh, so if you're uh, driving in and out of uh, Pittsburgh, I would recommend that you really take the bus. Uh, <laughs> For eight dollars a day, you can uh, round trip in and out of Pittsburgh. Uh, there's between uh, seven and eight buses every day. It's a great uh, facility right here in downtown Newcastle. So that place is humming from before six in the morning until after eight yeah. o'clock at night with commuters. And you can see the parking lot's always full. Yeah. Because there's a whole lot of folks that are going downtown Pittsburgh yeah. for entertainment. Other folks are going down for school. A lot of the technical schools are in that downtown uh, marketplace in Pittsburgh. Yeah. So those uh, young folks, and sometimes a little bit older, are coming over here to the park and ride lot and yeah. catching the bus. And uh, it's a good transportation center to get anywhere. It's the hub for, for the whole county. So Oh, really? Yeah. So um, one thing we consider is is maybe offering, we were talking about a, a marketplace, uh, um, kind of like a place where some artisan and craft people could come in. Right. And you, I'm sure you've been out to the land. And right, yeah. We understand they're, they're struggling. We're not trying to take business away from the land. No, I because, think the land's doing okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I think I think they're, they're doing fine. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that uh, our friends up at the Hoyt uh, Institute of Fine yeah. Arts are looking at this downtown marketplace yeah. as a place where, where there might be opportunities yeah. for uh, for art shows and for maybe yeah. you know, permanent type of facilities. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity. I mean, we yeah. already have photographers here in town, professional yeah. photography yeah. studios. The building we're in right now, Washington Center, is 100% yeah. leased. Okay. And I can't yeah. remember the last time <laughs> that happened. See, this building's had a lot of vacancies for a long time. But right now, it's 100% leased. And talking to the leasing agent, he gets he was telling us he gets a couple of calls okay. a week by folks that want space in the downtown. And he has to turn them away because he's full. Okay. So there's – and, of course, there's um – other places that aren't so full and maybe we could there's we've got some opportunities okay. in some of our larger older buildings yeah uh, but but those are opportunities for okay. entrepreneurs yeah. that, that have some money to invest that want to rehab some okay. of these older facilities bring them up to current standards yeah. I mean that's what's happened here in this building 
Yeah. So well, there, there are those opportunities. We've been um, trying to understand some of the uh, barriers to getting some of these buildings occupied. Like, we were point, so both economic and maybe psychological, too. Some of it is access to capital markets. Some of the okay. folks that have great okay. ideas may not have the financing to do okay. the rehab that, that might need to be done. Yeah. Uh, and that's something that we at the county try to overcome with yeah. uh, working with the Lawrence County Economic Development Corporation with low-income loans, okay. uh, those kind of things so that uh, uh, folks that don't have access to capital markets, maybe they can get uh, some uh, low-interest low loans, maybe some grant funds to help them get started here in the downtown. A good example of social entrepreneurship is the Confluence Coffee Shop okay. right across the yeah. street here. Uh, that was started by yes. Cray Youth and Family Services as oh, really? a social enterprise. So, uh, I mean, their goal is to at least break even, and I think they're getting very close. Uh, yeah. They've got great food, good coffee, yeah. meeting spaces. They're sort of a hub for community meetings right now. Uh, so I think that's a great opportunity here in our county. Yeah. And it's attracting those kind of millennials that, that look for those kind of what they call third places. Yeah. When there's home, work, okay, <laughs> now what do you do? The yeah. third place is places that that's like the great. Y. Yeah. And the Y in Newcastle is a tremendous asset also. They bring thousands of people in town every day so, that, so. That, that come into town, work out, you know, you know, do exercise with their kids and with, with older adults. Uh, so they bring in folks every day, all day, seven days a week uh, to our downtown. And that's a, that's a real market. Eaton Park right next door yeah. gets a lot of that spinoff. Burger oh, King do they? Okay, the that's street. good. Of course, so the, there's the drugstore right there, right yeah. in. They're all sort of interlinked, and they're all on the same block almost. And so well, that's and a natural I'd, I'd like to talk now. to you about that. Uh, um, I, we were talking, prepping for the show. We talked about what wrote, uh, Route 18 goes through and becomes Mor Moravia Street. Moravia Street. Moravia. Yeah. I can never pronounce that right. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, we, we were talking about that as maybe being Main Streets. We, we have our ideas of what a Main Street of a business is. Right. But, but I see, you know, this section we're in right now being more ser professional mm -hmm. services sector, and that is becoming more of a retail. Right. You mentioned Burger King and you mentioned Eaton Park. It seems like there's a lot of room in there for some more businesses. Well, you look at a business like Pizza Man Pizza. Yeah. Great pizza, great calzones. Okay. You can walk in there like a guy like me who's out and I got to grab a quick bite. Yeah. They got pizzas ready yeah. to go. Little Johnny's Two's, the yeah. same thing. Yeah. Uh, right here in downtown. I mean, you don't have to wait. You yeah. don't have to order. You can walk in. They got them all spread out. Yeah. And, and I got to say, I, I have no self control. <laughs> when I see their pizza there on the table, I got to have some. So, uh, those are folks that, that saw an opportunity, saw yeah. a market. I yeah. mean, other folks would have said, oh, we got plenty of pizza yeah. places. But, man, they, they, they put out a yeah. good pie. Well, and, 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 uh, and they're not the only ones. There's, there's lots of great pizza here in town. Yeah. There's lots of good food in general. It's an opportunity to come into town, grab something like some quality food, some fast yeah. food, um, you know, sit down at Eaton Park, have a nice relaxing meal. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there are those kind of things that people can come into town and enjoy. Well, when we talk about revitalizing the downtown, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, there's, you know, we talk about coming down um, Route 18. Nishanik has a lot of uh, retail, real right. estate, and there's a lot of businesses, and you can't have the same kind of businesses in the same no. area. No one's going to. But we talk about, um, you know, kind of bringing iconic businesses because, if, if you look at really the interstates and you look at the um, state, when you come down 18, you come down that big hill in right. the town, your your impulse is to steer to the right, is to go out I to know. Union yep. Square. Yep. Right. Yep. And so, you know, we're really looking um, at, you know, what kind of different can you bring down into, um, into downtown to really be an iconic attraction? Well, I think the, some of the things, we can build on some of the things that okay, are already here. Okay. Like the Love Light uh, Boutique and, and, okay. and Yoga Studio. Man, I mean, that's one of a kind. There's nothing else like that in Lawrence County. Yeah. They've got very unique and individual products, uh, very unique sort of yeah. market market position. Uh, another one, which I, I actually in, enjoy, and people are going to think this is odd maybe on my part, is I like going into the pawn shop. You know, oh, do you? Oh, parking. Well, yeah. my, yeah, my, my daughter's a musician. 
Um, okay. So and there's they have a, a, a. I mean, you have to keep stopping back, and I've done that. Yeah. Uh, we got her a really nice older Epiphone guitar. Oh, okay. There. Got her a nice mandolin there. I mean, where do you oh, find okay. a mandolin? Yeah. So it, it's really pretty cool. Yeah. At good prices, so it's like you know, kind of yeah. kid friendly type. So it's kind of like antiquing almost. Well, and it that's, is, and, and that's you, very. You, you in, go in, and, the, and the, yeah. the inventory changes all the time. Yeah. You don't know what you're going to find. Every now and then, I, I go in because she's got this sort of. Uh, hankering to maybe play the banjo. Yeah. They don't get many banjos, so I'll stop <laughs> in every now and then. I say, you got a yeah. banjo? And they say, no, come back again. We might. You never know. So, and, you know, Lawrence County, you know, antiquing's kind of in cliche towards, you know, yeah. older. Or when you're you're going. But, you know, Lawrence County does have a lot of, it's mostly yeah. an older, it's an older right. county. But, but again, if if that's, you know, the kind of services if, they if want. that's your thing. And then, then you have a great place to do that in. Yeah, and you that do. Would, and would, and, and I, there's opportunities yeah. in our downtown market for antique retail. Okay, yeah. I don't think there's a lot of that there. I wouldn't call uh, Bark and Pawn Shop. Yeah, uh, an antique an antique store. No. They do have get some some older products in there, but uh, I mean one of the nice things is the day I went in uh, yeah. uh, to look at uh, at guitars for my daughter and they had yeah. the Epiphone. The guys played it for me. Oh, they restrung they? it. They got it all ready. Oh, to so go. they're so kind of a music shop too. They huh? are. I mean, I I really. Yeah. I, I, I got a you know I got got a kind of kick out of it because yeah. I personally I don't know if you know music is not I mean I don't know where <laughs> my daughter gets it she's a very talented musician <laughs> but uh, so they were really very accommodating they're nice guys in there uh, so I mean and that's true of I think most of the small merchants here in the downtown yeah they're kind of mom and pop operations yeah they're always there to help you if they don't have what you, what you need yeah. they'll generally either go out of their way to tell you where you can find it. Or to get it in for you. So, so I think that's yeah. kind of nice. And so we're um, exploring with this marketplace uh, lifestyle kind of right. concept where you bring the community back. And, and ec the economy comes about the community, yeah. providing for the community. Yeah. And, you know, you're, you're, you're talking about some. I, uh, I've, my brother's kind of, and I have gotten into brewing. I, I knew a brewmaster. Right. And, and so you, you go out to a place like um, Hermitage, and they have a, um, they actually have a brew sh no, well not yeah Hermitage they, that's good. they actually have a small brew shop out there mm -hmm. but it seems there's a lot of stores out that day but and it seems like it would be a good opportunity and, in and, here and I don't know how far it's it's come but there's talk about a microbrewery I know they've yeah. been looking around well, it, the area for, yeah. for a location so I think there's that kind of opportunity yeah. here in well, town too well um, also well this, the place out in um, Hermit and you know that would be great because I I think there's a lot of you go up to Joseph's they actually sell um, wine juice right and, and mm -hmm. the carboys and stuff right. and the yeast whatever you need to make the wine yeah but you know in in this beer shop is 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 in same D &D. idea but for beer yeah yeah they yeah. they sell it but there's no like really good location but so there's like that kind of artisan kind of right. revival kind and of people thing. are doing yeah. that now that's that's sort of uh yeah and people want to do their own cooking and people want to yeah. make their own wine and i've got friends that yeah that make their own wine and uh, i mean that's sort of an old tradition that's coming yeah. back yeah. in newcastle back in the day yeah lots of folks like everybody's grandpa made, <laughs> made some good red wine yeah and, and, and i i think there's some pride coming back in yeah. some of the younger generation that say listen I, i'd like to try that because yeah. they may even have some of you know the, the equipment they need, some of the uh, yeah. the great presses and, yeah. and, and the bottling equipment, and maybe even some of the bottles <laughs> to uh, to make. Yeah, they're them. they're actually floating around. I've I've found a few. Yep, yep. you gotta um, want the yard sale so, sometimes. <laughs> so there, there's so there's that kind of interest. And and Barbara was uh, Barbara Grossman when she was talking about this with me last week. Um, we had a discussion on whether or not these stores were open. Well, she mentioned that you go outside of Newcastle, all throughout Lawrence County, they're kind of sprinkled around, and right. you have to go find them. Yeah. And that would be kind of the marketplace would be at least a place where they could maybe come and sell their goods, maybe build them in front of you, and right. give some people. You know, there's there's an example yeah. of something that's very similar to that down okay. in the Elwood City area. They have okay. a have uh, set aside an area just off the main street yeah. uh, for a farmer's market in yeah. the season. And we have one right across the street here. Okay. Uh, right I, in, I in don't the know if everyone knows about that Next to not, AAA in, in the summer months. They start generally in June and go okay. through October. I think it's uh, Wednesday and Saturday. Okay. Uh, keep keep tuned. Uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, I mean, those kind of opportunities were locally grown produce. Yeah. That's organic. Uh, locally uh, sourced foods. Yes. Uh, 
I mean, traditionally, uh, you can leave here and in 10 or 15 minutes be out in Amish country and, and <laughs> find a lot of that. Yeah, but, but some of those folks are coming now into the town. And, and I think it would be great if we could get them in here. And, and I think we are, little by little. Okay. And, and um, that's, uh, that's sort of a burgeoning movement okay. here in the community to provide more locally sourced uh, opportunities for food and drink and those kind of things. Now, I had mentioned in, um, uh, if you go up to Erie, there's an Erie County Farms. Right. And they and it's very popular among b both the poor and the middle class. Right. And they actually bring in the farmers. And it turns out when the farmers bring in their food, you would think, oh, more expensive. No, not It's true. actually far less expensive, yep, it's less better expensive. quality. Well, and uh, uh, our local uh, Ag Extension office publishes yeah. a guide to farmers markets for Lawrence okay. County. Uh, and this one right here in town is included in that. Okay. But there's several of them. In the outlying communities that are that are located yeah. on the farms where the produce is okay, grown, yeah. I mean you can't get any fresher than that. Yeah. But that's what kind of makes living in a small town with yeah. you know close in rural areas really rewarding because I mean I like good quality food yeah. too. I mean I, I think I'm a, a gardener sometimes. I grow some of my own produce yeah. at, at my house. Yeah. But I'm never as good as the folks that really do <laughs> it for for a living. My my tomatoes and peppers and all this. <laughs> I mean I talk to other people that do it and I'm just a I'm an amateur. Some of these guys are, are, are really good at it, and uh, but there's always lots yeah. of local produce yeah. through the summer here, and if you get used to uh, and get good at uh, putting up food, yeah. I mean, you can have you know, good quality food all year long. Yeah. Ag Extension can help you with that. They yeah. also have a Master Gardener's program. Oh, do they? That, that, that teaches you, I should take it, uh, <laughs> that teaches you how to be a better gardener. Okay, so that's, and, uh, and, and, you know, and you that's right here in town. Okay, and you talk about uh, community um, kind of you know the gardening and that's kind of the exact thing we'd like to get more about is these kind of you come down as a community learn something and, right and that would be kind of the marketplace so you know maybe we can find a way to making the agricultural department more um, more uh, get people to know more about when their classes are doing and I think so, that'd be a great idea yeah I, I know their master gardeners program is just wonderful. In fact, one okay. of our judge, Judge Becomes a master gardener. Okay, I actually met him. We had yeah. a tour of yeah. he tore yeah. he toured my uh, nephew's Boy Scout group down yeah. the county. Great courthouse. guy. We have a, a great judiciary here in Lawrence County, um, and and even though I think Judge Motto has probably not gone through the master gardener program, okay. he can now garden me oh, in okay. his sleep. I mean, he <laughs> is a real gardener. He okay. has. I mean, he's almost. I'd almost put him in the farmer category. Okay. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> so not just a lawyer and a judge. No, he's not also, just a lawyer and a judge. He's also he's, a farmer. He's, he's almost on the edge of farming. So, okay. Okay. So, uh, um, and he's, so he's always yeah. promising me, and, and I'll say it right on the air. I've seen some of his figs, but I haven't gotten any yet. Oh, so okay, I want some so. of those fresh figs okay. next summer. Oh, you can grow figs in this area. You can. Know. There's there's a way to do it, and he knows how, and he oh. has lots of figs. And those, I shouldn't give them up because now everybody's going to be going to the judge. This is like, judge, I'm, I'm going to need some figs. He's going to need some figs. Okay, so it, it in you know, um, so let's let's uh, kind of turn our attention to less around the food and the the craftsman and stuff. It's lunchtime. You know, I'm um, hungry. Oh, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> um, you better have some figs, judge. I'm telling you. <laughs> um, but. You, um, you can't. We, I've been talking about a producer economy. We we service a lot of these economies are in the area are service economies. They right. they provide either professional services and you need that because they bring in high capital. They bring in people right. who need those services who have more more income to spend on these other services, which creates the jobs. But you you can't just have a servers economy. Maybe that was viewed in the '90s. That right. was kind of. But you need a producer economy. And so um, I, I mentioned we talked about uh, IT. And we talked about like um, networking, computer, um, mm -hmm. so you know, really the the digital um, producers. Right. And um, would do you, would you um, be able to discuss at all um, maybe some of the if there's any infrastructure issues with uh, there are IT? some. Um, okay. I mean, so I'd, I'd love us to be in a position where we had better internet connectivity okay. in the community. Yeah. Uh, I wish we were a FiOS community for Verizon. Okay. We're not. We're not a you know fiber comes into town, but it's not very well distributed out into no, the, I, out into the neighborhoods in the community. Yeah, we're generally still on copper wire, which limits the uh, the speed. Yeah, uh, that has an effect on our ability to attract folks that need high speed internet yeah. access. Uh, Comcast does a, does a better job, quite honestly, in many okay. ways. Uh, although that could improve also. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I mean. Even at the county, we try to locally source our, okay. our internet connectivity issues. We just redid our website. We hired okay. local guys to do it. Uh, and I think that's important. Yeah. If you're looking for services, look locally first, especially um, in the IT field. 
we, we found great, great resources right here in the community. Uh, we're looking at, uh, in, the, uh, in the spring, going up to Westminster College and, and finding some interns up there. They're okay. going to be able yeah. to keep our, our website updated and, and add new content and do that kind of things. Because this is a, I mean, I'm, I'm at that age where sure I know how to work all the, <laughs> all the tools, but kind of. But you're not an engineer. But I'm not an engineer. I'm not a coder. No. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to do uh, yep. maintenance. Uh, my son, who's 15, uh, knows how to do that, but we can't get him a W-2 because he's too young. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he knows how to build websites. He knows yeah. how to build apps. I mean, that's what 15-year-olds yeah. do yeah. these days, not guys <laughs> my age. Uh, but we look at local talent and where we can okay. find that local yeah. talent. And I think that's important. Those folks are here in our community, and we need to work at yeah. that to make sure that uh, if you have a need, uh, it could be locally sourced yeah. and, and, and use folks. That's the way we're going to grow this economy, yeah. internally first. Uh, mm. But we also have to provide all those things that that, that generation of, uh, of folks is looking for, good yeah. recreational and outdoor yeah. opportunities, good housing stock, yeah. uh, quality education for their family and their, their kids. And I think we're about that every day. Okay. I think that's all coming well, together um, in this community. You, now, how is how is the connectivity down to here into uh, Mill Street, Washington? Is this? I think right in town, it's pretty good. This I think is so, probably I think so. That would be good. really attractive for that, maybe that'd be attractive some for, businesses, right? That's uh, another right. And when we're talking about downtown, I've the issue of a couple issues have been raised up that might be preventing um, cost effectiveness for bringing businesses right. in. One um, reg, certain regulations like the health code. Right. Um, that it's been a little strict in town and that there's maybe some hoops that you have to jump through? You do, but I, I mean, I, I can't criticize the folks that are doing okay. the enforcement because <laughs> you want good quality food, you want it yeah. fresh, you want it hot. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's a real issue. Uh, I don't think anybody wants to get sick because yeah. they ate food that wasn't properly prepared, properly stored. Okay. Um, so I, I, well, I, I think that's a, that's a, I don't think that's a very high hurdle yeah. to, to scale. Okay. Uh, well, I, I was wondering if... I, I think sometimes yeah. zoning regulations might yeah. need to be a little bit more accommodating for small and medium-sized enterprises. Okay, yeah. um, in fact, I was just across the street at a meeting on the new county comprehensive plan that was held yeah. down at uh, the Riverplex. Okay. And one of the things they talked about is some of the older vacant storefronts in town okay. are really too large for the smaller entrepreneurial yeah. folks. Yeah. The, the zoning regulations and our comprehensive plans need yeah. to accommodate some of the smaller sort of uh, one and two person operations because nobody's gonna move into uh, a 10,000 square foot facility <laughs> yeah. with two people. We, we were gonna be a lot of dark space. Yeah, we were actually having a conversation about this, like maybe, and that, that brings us to another point is a lot of the rent on some of these buildings. Some of these buildings, the rent is pretty yeah. steep and the landlords need to be more realistic about what's possible and maybe yeah. offer some incentives. Uh, I mean, al although, <laughs> We're renting some space now. Uh, our uh, 911 emergency management center yeah. is building a new facility oh, out that's, on, that's, on yeah. uh, uh, County Line Road. And uh, we needed to find some space in the interim to store our equipment. Okay. We're, we just signed a lease to go down to the, uh, uh, the old ABC uh, supply company on Moravia Street. Okay. First, the landlord is very reasonable, very easy to work with, yeah. and gave us the first month's rent free. Okay. Now that's the kind of thing that incentivizes people yeah. to locate in the community. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm hoping to get some of the people who own the buildings down here and I, we can I, have a little conversation. I think you'll find most of them reasonable. Yeah. Uh, there, there, there's some structural reasons why it's, it's, it's hard. Like we said, some of the buildings yeah. are just too small for mom yeah. and pop operations for small one and two yeah. person shops. Well, so let me ask you a, a question and maybe you can't answer this or not, but um, Philadelphia, uh, it's had a lot of little businesses pop right. up but they do something called work sharing okay and that's where uh, you're a professional maybe you're an independent you're you're right. uh, so you're a contractor and you rent a part they have a they provide a facility right. uh, maybe it would be a high-tech facility maybe it would even be cooking I mean you know but you go in there you do you rent a certain right. the usage of the space and you get several professionals. Has that been explored for Newcastle? We've looked at that. Uh, there's okay. actually uh, really all around us. Uh, if you look up in the Mercer County area in the okay. Park yep. Business Park, yeah. uh, 
they they have that type of facility. Okay. And, and, and they're really called incubators. Okay. Uh, there's a good business incubator in Youngstown. It's a great model. Uh, there's one up in Herbert. We need to be about that business here in town. So. Uh, and we're looking at that kind of space and how we might make okay. that work. And we would be very interested in because especially yeah. I think getting a, some of the higher tech. Right. And that's a great opportunity. Yeah. What you want to do is you want to give folks that are just starting out in business. Yeah. A low cost opportunity so they don't have a lot of overhead. Yeah. But maybe even there's some synergies between yeah. the folks that are already there so that maybe you're in the IT business and the guy next to you who might be in the dental supply business says, hey, I need yeah. somebody over here who can help me build a website so people yeah. are driven to, to the business I'm trying to start. So maybe there's some synergies between yeah. the different businesses yeah. and being an incubator and they can feed off each other. And, and we, we also we, we want to do that. Yeah, and we also talk about Newcastle as being form, uh, historically innovative. You know, this was a steel. You have fireworks, right? Um, yep. Big three still, right? Or well, yeah, we still have fireworks manufacturers yeah. here in town. Do and they, they actually manufacture in town? Or they do. They, they do some assembly okay, so out in well, not in town, but, but here in the, <laughs> the county. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. They, I mean, they, they they source a lot of it overseas. Just, yeah, uh, but Economics. some of it they some of it they still do here in town. Okay. Uh, oh, that's good. So I mean that that's a it, very good thing, and we're so nationally and internationally known as a yeah, center for yeah, the fireworks. Zimbales has their down right in Pyrotechnico. You can see that. Uh, you can see what they do at Zimbales down in. Uh, Washington D.C. out in the Shannock every year. It's oh, insane. That's, that's Some ex- of those. <laughs> yep. We get the same shows here that people travel hundreds yeah, of miles they pay, to see. They pay. You know, oh, absolutely. Can, Stay overnight. So, in so that's it's a beautiful display and it really it highlights is. the. But you know, one, one thing. Uh, the reason I bring this up is that you know you're always innovations about coming up with the next thing and a lot of um, manufacturing. They're they're somewhat coming back and they they provide right. a service, but you know moving forward. Um, you know, there's, there's, you, you talk about things like 3D printing, customizable right. manufacturing, small scale yeah. manufacturing. Um, is this, what is, is this, is, is, and it doesn't even have to be the city because obviously you don't want right. that necessarily in a downtown. Maybe a small architectural firm, you're making something. Mm-hmm. I actually read a story last night where China was 3D printing an entire building. So, oh, that's but, more for show than go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know how like, good of a like building it is. Same like with a car. Would, Somebody's 3D yeah. printed a car. Well, yeah. that's more for show than go. Yeah. Just and, to show this so, proof of concept. You know, yeah. um, and maybe those kind of uh, facilities yeah. are on the outside of the city reviving you some know, my, new buildings. My son is in uh, in 10th grade in the Shannock, okay. and they have a 3D printer up there, and they make things yeah. with, with their 3D printer. So I, I'm very uh, uh, enthusiastic, and, and, and I'm, I'm a real booster of our school systems yeah. here in the county that are teaching kids on, yeah. on this new technology. They do 3D stuff. Well, they do robotics engineering. Okay. And this is at a, you know, let's so face we it, could it's a small high school. And they do the yeah. same thing yeah. at, at Mohawk, at Newcastle, at Union, yeah. at, at Laurel. I mean, they have these kind of technologies there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm always uh, encouraged. Uh, you know, one of our biggest part of our economies is, uh, is agriculture and the future farmers yeah. of America. They compete statewide with yeah. some of their projects. Uh, I just saw a demonstration, um, and I think it was Mohawk's demonstration about uh, uh, repurposing a gasoline engine to run yeah. on natural gas. I oh, thought okay. that was pretty cool. That, and that was yeah, going that, on out, yeah. out at Mohawk, and think, that's a big trend these do days. Do you think there would be, um, economically, are we striving to get like, talk about um, these kind of conversion factories or you know. I think we are in fact I was just talking to uh, the, the manager at Newcastle Area Transit Authority and he's got folks down there today looking at a natural gas fueling station okay. on the site of Newcastle Transit okay. that would not be available just for transit but would be available to other fleets and other community okay. members that want to fire their uh, their vehicles using natural gas okay so some of these innovative things are happening okay. right in our own backyard. So we, we're hoping we get some of the actual manufacturing and production Absolutely. in here. Absolutely. Because so, so those are the conversion. good jobs. Yep. Uh, we're going to need to go in just a minute here. But uh, sure. real quick, uh, there's some buildings uh, down here on um, uh, on Washington on, on Washington here. Right. Uh, that have the fascia falling off. And, they're right. getting, and we're not sure. We're trying to get a hold of the owners. Um, is this county looking at doing something about that? Or? I, I tell you what, between myself and Dan Vogler and Bob Delsinger, we talk about those kind of issues on okay. almost a daily basis on how we can work more closely with the city of Newcastle. Okay. In fact, I was just talking to Anthony Chaffee just before I came okay. in here today. He's the city's code official uh, about the kind of things that we're going to okay. do to uh, 
do some targeted yeah. demolition of some of the houses. And oh, okay, apart. so you might actually a absolutely some, of, some of these business buildings and some of these buildings that are beyond repair, they may need to to, to be demolished because okay. what they are is they then discourage they discourage investment in in absolutely. neighboring absolutely. buildings. Yeah. So sometimes and and there, we may just have to come to the realization yeah. that we have too much square footage that's not leasable yeah and, and hopefully sometimes that has to come down and sometimes you have to do eminent domain and, and well even you know not even i mean some of these we you know it's, it's just a matter of making that opportunity okay. out there and you create real estate which offers other opportunities yeah. in terms of development and, and there's from the ground a, there's up. at least one building there that's really bad and oh absolutely yeah and we i can, we'd, I can I, think, of I, think I think of people walking down the street knowing what i'm talking about well anyways uh thank you uh this is county commissioner steve craig coming thank in here you. for Thank you NC for having TV, me. NCTV, Focus NC, uh, with Matthew Geiger from the Washington Outsider. Uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, we hope thank to continue you. this conversation. Yep, I'll be All back. Right. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right. It's Little Johnny's Pizza 2 in downtown Newcastle with a great variety menu that you will tell everybody about. Chris Quiera, the owner, is here with more information. Stop down and see us at Little Johnny's 2. We're located at 130 East Washington Street, or give us a call at 724-657-2210. Let's talk with Norm. We're with Norm Lutton. Norm, you're the owner of Crazy Car Restoration. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it's a new company we're opening up. Uh, originally, we was Lutton Auto Repair, and uh, we're adding on a little bit. And we're trying to bring out some uh, custom cars for people uh, somewhere in uh, between the five and twenty thousand dollar range, uh, what people can actually afford today. Uh, Any more, you know, all these cars are so expensive. We're just trying to make ends meet for other people. That sounds great. Now, uh, but I've been fixing cars for over thirty-five years. That's great. So when you have a repair, big or small, call Norm. We have a great relationship with Main Street Clothiers and Custom Tailors and downtown Newcastle at 210 East Washington Street. And whenever you watch Focus NC, my wardrobe is furnished by Main Street Clothiers and Custom Tailors. Whether it's time to fix the furnace, throw the salt, shovel the drive, it's Paul D. Weller Hardware. We have what you need. Whether it's time to get warm, make the macaroni, make the ravioli, make the pizza, throw another log on the fire. It's Paul D. Weller Hardwood. Hey, let's go sled ride. It's Butts Flowers when you want a wide variety of flowers for any occasion. They also have a selection of fine gifts and more. Butts Flowers is conveniently located in downtown Newcastle at 120 East Washington Street. Call Butts Flowers at 724-652-7727 or toll free from anywhere, 1-800-443-7726. It's Butts Flowers in downtown Newcastle. It's Two P's, Thrifts and Gifts, 2626 Elwood Road for the best in giftware and original merchandise. Stop by Two P's, Thrifts and Gifts. Check out their many treasures. Gently worn clothing, original items, one of a kind, and also furniture. Something for everyone. Men's clothes. Accessories for the house. It's Two P's, Thrifts and Gifts, 2626 Elwood Road. Stop by. There's a treasure waiting for you. Whether it's a scheduled appointment or same-day service, DiCaprio Carpet Cleaning offers 24-7 service for commercial, industrial, and residential, as well as fire and water damage restoration. Using state-of-the-art technology, DiCaprio Carpet Cleaning experts are ready to professionally clean your carpet today. Call DiCaprio Carpet Cleaning for a free in-home estimate. Thank you for making us Lawrence and Mercer County's largest carpet cleaner. And remember, It's winter, so come on inside, grab a cup of hot cocoa, and sit down and watch NCTV 45.